friend that sticks close to the brother. He'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you, no matter what situation you go through. No matter if anyone ever got it, else leaves you. He'll never leave. He's a great, he's an awesome God. Who you'll find to be your dearest friend if you go looking. Blessed art thou among women. 
And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and shalt uh, bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How? All you women have to say, How? How shall this be? Seeing I know not a man. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Shadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which thou uh, shalt be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Behold thy cousin Elizabeth. She hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God Nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Hallelujah. Lord, bless your word to our hearts once again, and especially to our moms. And I'll thank you for it in Jesus' wonderful name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Highly favored of God. I'm telling you, uh, Napoleon said this, the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. And I believe it was the hand that rocked the cradle of Jesus there in that manger that was going to bring forth the greatest man that brought the greatest changes to the world that the world was ever to know from that day until this. That son was going to be the one that was going to rule the world in ways Mary could never have dreamed possible, yet God was doing this. And what a beautiful was it. He chose Nazareth, that place that had such a bad reputation that could anything good come out of Nazareth in a small town and then out of the, just a young, young kid. She was probably anywhere from, from like 14 to 17 years of age. We're not exactly sure. But she was a very young teenager at the time uh, when God did this. And boy, I tell you, God's got um, marvelous ways. Of, he takes the most uh, unassuming things and does something great and miraculous. You know why he does that? Because at the end of the day, he wants all the glory. He wants men to know this could not just have happened. It had to be the hand of God. It had to be the favor of God that brought it to pass. Two times the text Gabriel told Mary that she was favored, highly favored by God. And there's some reasons why. It's not real obvious, uh, uh, but what there was there about this Mary that had caught the Creator's attention? What did he see in Mary that he could use? What was it that said, this is the one? There were millions which what let him know this was the one. Because God, he is God, and he knows. And out of all the millions, he knew this young girl was the one that heaven was going to choose to bring forth this miracle. And as I started and thought about this, and I got this sermon, this is how I get my sermons. I was thinking about Mother's Day, this is about three weeks ago, and all of a sudden I, I thought of this phrase, Mary the Mother of God, and I went in and started researching it, and, and that's where the inspiration come to talk about this mother that was highly favored of God. And as I studied and reflected, I got some thoughts I want to share them with you as to why God chose her to shower his favor upon. What were the qualities or the characteristics of this woman? that made her the most special one, the blessed one by God on this earth. And we can learn a lot from the life of Mary. And so, first of all, I want to look at what Mary already had. How many of God knows what we already have? Even before we know what we have, God knows what we have. Amen? And so he knew what was already in Mary. He'd been watching her from birth and understood her very thoughts, her intents, everything about her. And I'm telling you, you want to be used of God. Have your thoughts on Him. I mean, and let God be the ruler of your life. And I'm telling you, God will step in and use you in a way you never thought possible. What did 
didn't marry over here. She had a proper perspective of life. When Gabriel tapped her on that shoulder that day, I'm telling you, the Bible says she was greatly troubled. Can you imagine? <laughs> you're a 14, 15 year old girl, and all of a sudden the angel taps you on the shoulder and says, You're going to have a baby. There was only one person that knew, two people that could know that she couldn't have a baby. That was Mary and God. Mary knew she couldn't have a baby because she never had a relationship with a man. An intimate relationship, never. So she knew that, but nobody else on the earth knew that, especially Joseph. So she was greatly troubled when she's finding out, I'm going to have a baby. What's Joseph going to do? He had some options. He could divorce her or he could have her stoned to death. That's enough to trouble your heart a little bit. Also, I mean, even if he didn't stone her, she had to live with that, with that scar of this being an illegitimate child the rest of her life. In fact, she lived with that scar even though it was alive. People called Jesus uh, that, that illegitimate child that, uh, from that girl named Mary. Jesus had to bear that scar. Mary had to bear that scar. Even though they knew, hallelujah, that that was not the truth. But the truth will always be justified. Amen. Always. It took a while and it took a lot of heartache and everything that Mary went through to bring it to pass. But I'm telling you, that's our God's way it works and I never could figure God out in all the ways and He tries to do things in our life. I can't understand, you know, why, why God allows Ken to get cancer and then when he gets cancer, and the guy that's going to come and do the bopsy and everything morning, uh, uh, I said, Ken, you need to go across the river. Get this done. My people across the river said, no, no, I'll just do it right here at Oak Memorial. I said, I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray that that don't happen. And I pray. I said, Lord, just let him go across the river. Give him enough sense, God. I'm stubborn as a mule. God, he's going to make the wrong choice. Change everything, God. And you know, the Lord answered my prayer. The machine broke down that was supposed to do the threat, the, the, the check on him, and then they could do it mechanically, but the doctor coming to, to the hospital the next day had a bicycle wreck, he was riding his bicycle, and broke both of his wrists. So they had to ship him to Barnes to do the test, and they were able to give him back his life again, and he said, hey, your prayers really work. <laughs> Not always, though. There are many a time I've asked God, and God said, no. And you know when you know God says no, it don't happen. But yeah. boy, it's great when it does happen. And God spoke to Mary. Mary, you're going to have this baby. I'm going to see you through it. And though she was greatly, greatly troubled, she had the right perspective in this. And I, I, I love this. This is so beautiful. Uh, even though at first she was troubled, she began to see things the way God sees them. And this is the way she responded. This was her perspective in verse 37. It says, uh, or, 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 not verse 37, let me see if I can find it here. Verse 38. And Mary said to the angel, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Hallelujah. I am your servant. Your handmaid, whatever you have for my life, let it come to pass according to your word. First of all, her perspective was, hey, I'm not my own. I've been bought with a price. I belong to God. I don't belong to myself. And so, Lord, I'm your servant. And that word servant in the Greek means a bond slave. I'll do whatever. I'll go wherever. I'll be whatever you want me to be. My life is yours. That's what Mary was saying. As a young teenager, God knew what was already in her, a submission to the will of God. You'll never have the favor of God upon your life until you learn, hallelujah, you learn to submit to God and say, not my will, thy will be done. God can't use you. God can't power, uh, empower you and favor you if you don't have that kind of attitude. That was her perspective on life. And not only that, she said, she said, uh, Lord, she, she understood. Uh, uh, her perspective was that, that, that he was God. And because he's God, all things are possible. And so she just believed that no matter what, uh, it seemed impossible with God, it was possible. And so she had the proper perspective. 
uh, in this life of knowing that with my God all things are possible and I'm going to trust you Lord and I'm going to follow you no matter what I'm going to trust your word and I'm just going to do what you want me to do and uh, th this Mary understood the word of God where she got all this I don't know she was had a godly mother that raised her up in the, in the fear and admonition of the Lord because you right after uh, the section I just read to you in Luke chapter 1 if you go to Luke chapter 1 verse 46 to 56 you see the song of Mary and how she sings this song and it's filled with knowledge of the word of God as she exalts him as the most high and as the glorious one and as the everlasting one as the almighty God and she praises him and uh, there's 30 different biblical references uh, in that uh, little 11 verse verses that she sings this song of praise unto the Lord for that which he had done for her and it showed the, the knowledge she had of God the knowledge she had of God's word and folks, girls, ladies, moms, men, all of us, if we want the favor of God upon us, we need to know God's Word. Amen. Not only do we need to know it, we've got to be ready to obey it. Let's say, not my will, thy will be done. That was her perspective. And also, she had a perspective of realizing that it's the most precious gift that God gives to a woman and to a man. We're celebrating moms today. It's the greatest gift. Is that gift of a child. The psalmist says, heritage from the Lord. A gift from God. And Mary, when God told her she's going to bring forth this child, though she was greatly troubled in the beginning, she, she started thinking and started believing and said, wow, this is going to be amazing. It's going to be the most difficult thing I've ever done in my life. But I'm going to believe God. Hallelujah. And I'm going to thank God for this child. And I'm going to raise God, this child in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And I'm going to let God use me. And I'm going to praise him for it. And even though she was going to go through hell and back. And even though she was going to be mocked and ridiculed and put down. And become a, a, just a, a laughing stock of the community of Nazareth. They go through all kinds of trials and tests all through her life. Even unto uh, 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 her death. Mary had a struggle just living above the reproach and the evil that was said about her. But in the midst of that, she could say, it is more than worth it. Amen? Amen. There's a price to pay to have the favor of God upon your life. Mary, Mary was willing to pay that price because she had the right perspective. And she had that powerful principle that guided her life. It was the principle of God's word. And she knew that God could not lie. You know, whatever God said, God would do. And he would bring it to pass and that one of his promises would fall to the ground. And upon that godly, powerful principle that God was God and that his word was truth and that everything else would pass away, but not one jot nor tittle of his word would pass away. And Brenda, he built his life, and she built her life upon that powerful principle. Hallelujah. That what God has said, God will do. And all I have to do is rest in him. Not trust in this world or trust in the things that people say or do, but trust in my God. And I tell you, that principle kept her not only there that, that day when she found out she was going to bring forth the child, but all oh, later on in life, uh, she was going to meet Jesus as his first miracle. Isn't it amazing? The, his mom was there at the first miracle in uh, John chapter 2 where he turned the water into wine. Remember when they came with the, and, and, and they told him that they're, 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 they were out of wine, they were all frustrated, they didn't know what to do, and uh, uh, Mary went and got Jesus and told Jesus, he said, Mom, what am I going to do with you? You're, you're pushing the envelope here. And moms kind of do that with their kids sometimes. And uh, 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 Jesus loved her. And uh, Mary went and told the people, they were having water jokes. She says, whatever he tells you to do, do it. <laughs> I've learned a little bit in these years. These last 30 some years since I born him there in that manger in Bethlehem. And I can just tell you this whatever he tells you to do, do it. It's exactly what she said. It's powerful. And I preached a message on that so many years ago. I preached one. Just do it. I might preach it again sometime. Just do it. That's the swish on the logo of 
those, uh, what's it called, Nike, yeah, they got to do it. Uh, hey, I got something greater than Michael Jordan. I got Jesus Christ, hallelujah. And I'm telling you, whatever he tells you to do, if you let that powerful principle burn in your heart, that if God has said it, God will do it, and you begin to obey that and follow that in faith, trust in God's word, I'm telling you, Danny, miraculous things begin to happen for the glory of God. And that's what she said. Thirty-some years later, she had learned her lesson, learned her well. That was the principle that guided her life all the way to the end. That obey Him, and you'll have the blessing of the Lord upon your life. Amen? Amen. Because if we build this house, our labors will be in vain. But if God builds the house, hallelujah, through people that will trust Him, people that will have the right perspective and realize, hey, God knows what he's doing. Most of the time, George, we don't know what we're doing. We're just running around in circles. But if we get our focus on him, see things from God's point of view, his favor will rest upon us. Amen. Amen. And also God saw, chose Mary because he knew what Mary would become. See, God knows what you're going to become. In this room, he knows who's going to go to heaven and who's going to go to hell. He knows who's going to hear this message and who's going to flip it off like it don't matter. I do what I want to do. It doesn't matter to me. I'm just told to tell the truth and leave it go where it goes. I've had people curse me out when I try to tell them about Jesus Christ. Stay out of my life. Leave me alone. I say, hey, no problem. There's about six, seven billion people out there that I can go to other than you. I'm not going to waste my time on you. In fact, Jesus said, don't catch the pearl before the swine. There's a lot of people that don't want to hear it. What? Many most don't want to hear it, but those that do, Brother Roy is going to be willing to share that truth with them, hoping one day they'll respond to that truth and come to know him in that personal, intimate way that will change their lives. God knew what Mary would become, just like he knows what you're going to do with the rest of your life. You don't know that. But he gives you a free will, the choice to make that every day of your life so that when you end up in hell, you have no one to blame but yourself. Amen. God is such a gracious, loving God, even though he loves you. And he could force you, but he won't. He says, if you don't want to go to heaven, I don't want you there. That's right. You want to go to hell? Go! I've done everything I can do. My son brought it down on the cross to give you life and give you hope and give you purpose. Do you know what? That, that's fine. I am weak for you. But my goal, my purpose is that you go to heaven. That's God. He proved that. You know how he proved that? Because he hung his son on the cross and he died for us so that our sins could be forgiven so that everyone would have a way to go to heaven. And Jesus knows this morning what we're going to do with that truth. I think I, God, I bowed my knee to Jesus almost 50 years ago. And you know what? I won't know until I enter into his presence that fulfillment that's in my heart. But I want to follow him to the day that I die. And I'm not going to let any trial, any test, anything in this world detour me from praising him from the beginning to the end. What did he know Mary was going to become? She was going to become an un, unrelenting in her protection of Jesus. It started right there in, in Bethlehem. And they, were, they were going to uh, uh, kill him, kill Jesus. The word had gone out. What she knew, she got Joseph. And they, and they took a, 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 a horrible journey all the way down into Egypt just to protect her son so that nothing would happen. And then that uh, angel appeared to them some years later and said, go back up to Nazareth. And went back up to Nazareth, that long journey back up there, and went through all of that just to protect her son. Unrelenting protection in her heart. And uh, uh, mothers have that natural instinct, don't they, to protect their children? Yeah. Dads don't always have that. They should, but they don't. My wife trembles when she leaves the kids with me. <laughs> she had to come to America with Robbie because he had to have surgery done and he had a rare fungus disease that would have killed him. And God allowed us to be able to fly him home and they treated him and he, he was uh, completely well. We thank God. But while she was blessed, don't worry! Everything's under control. <laughs> yeah. Until I got the caustic soda 
out, and I had it on the, I went to, the sink was plugged up, so I was going to put it down the sink. And this is pretty potent stuff, pure powder, caustic soda. And I said, I went to go in the door, when somebody was using the bathroom, and I said, oh, okay. I came back and I set it on the shelf, on the, on the table, the kitchen table. And I said, I'll come back, well, I forgot. Got busy doing something, all of a sudden I heard a scream. It was my youngest son, Ryan, Ryan. He got into the caustic soda. He thought it was sugar. Oh, <laughs> oh screaming, burn his mouth. <coughs> I'm going, oh, no, no. And my in-laws were in the capital city of Freetown. So we was on the ham radio every night. And we had a missionary staying with us. His name was Steve Oretz. And I said, Steve, whatever you say, don't let my mother-in-law know what happened to you. I have a heart attack. She'll be up here tomorrow and they'll my neck off me. He said, don't worry, don't worry. The hell in her came on that night. I said, hello, hello. And she, she says, is everything okay? Is everything okay with the kids? And Steve came in and says, no! <laughs> Ryan's mouth is almost riding off because of the caustic soda. And I'm going, mm. <laughs> Guess who was at my house the next day? My wife's mom. <laughs> Whoa, was I in trouble. Be sure your sin will find you out. <laughs> My moms, moms are so protective, aren't they? Yeah. They see it before it happens and they're always watching. And we guys, we always think it can never happen. And what we think can never happen always happens. And we get ourselves in so much trouble for being naive and stupid. And our thank God for our moms. Dads, let's give moms a big hand. Even his own brothers uh, uh, didn't understand this. And this was this Mary, this unrelenting. I mean, you know that Mary was, this is a mother. Do you realize that all the disciples, everybody ran and, and escaped for their lives uh, uh, when Jesus was hung on the cross? Guess who was there at the cross? Mary. Mary. John, little John, he was too stubborn. He was the youngest of all the disciples. He was there too. Letting, Mary was there letting, you know, that's my son, that's my son. If I could, I would. I would take him off that cross. That was the mother's heart. She bled there for him. She wept there for him. Her heart was visibly moved. She was trembling and shaking at that cross. That's the heart of the mother. Yeah. Yes, sir. <coughs> Unrelenting protection. If she would have done whatever she could have, she would have laid her life down just to save her son. But that was not to be. And she understood the will of God. But still, if she could, she would have done it. Moms, God's called you to be protectors of your family. And your kids are facing all kinds of battles. It's being bombarded in this promiscuous world that we're living in. They have lowest self-esteem self and drugs and alcohol, peer pressure, sexual immorality, suicide, all those things. Plus we're bombarded with television, immorality and everything imaginable. And our culture is under total attack. And the only hope that kids have today is a mom and a dad that will say, this is wrong. We're going to stand by the principles of God's word and they protect their kids. My kids, they asked me, what would you do, Brother Roy? Kids all turned out really pretty good. What did you do? I said, I do nothing. I married the right woman. Yeah. I married the right woman. I married a woman that feared God and would teach my kids. And I'd come home and my wife would say, you need to have a talk to your kids. They all need a spanking. And I'd line them up and give them a good spanking. No question. <laughs> Except for one time, I'm going to tell you that story. 
God's called us to protect our children. And mom's that load comes upon you more than anyone else because you're with them and you understand them. And there's bad friendships out there, bad dating, all kinds of things going on, bad parties that they want to go to, and things like that. And somebody's got to say no. And it better be you, Bob. Then you better bend down and say, Dad, this is not a good idea. And my wife said to bend me up. And how many times did I think that? I had the wisdom most of the time to listen to her. And when I didn't, I paid the price. When I brought a motorcycle for my son, I co-signed it. When they, we bought the motorcycle home, I was all excited. And when I pulled in, the motorcycle fell down in the truck when we was coming and scratched it a little bit. I came out feeling sick about that. I come to her and I said, hey, hon, you want to come up and look at the bike? She says, no, I don't want to look at it. Didn't want you to do it. Wish you hadn't done it. If you want me to be happy about it, I'm sorry. I can't be happy about you buying a motorcycle with my son. He's going to pay for it. I just go something. Honey, he's going to pay for it. I don't care. You bought him the fastest thing out there. It's going to kill himself. I said, Mom, it's not going to happen. And it didn't. Weeks. <laughs> then he was laid up for a year. Five surgeries on his feet, and I'm still living with that decision. Amen. Should have listened to mom. Wow. She not only had a just a, a determination to protect her child. Unrelenting, but she had an unwavering love and devotion for Jesus Christ, for her son. I mean, uh, uh, she was there for him all the way. Uh, some people think that the last scene was Jesus on the cross, the last picture was Mary there at the cross, but that's not where we see her last of all. You have to go to Acts chapter 1. And uh, this is after the resurrection, after Easter. Remember, that's our theory, theme throughout this time. After Easter. Guess who one of those 120 were in the upper room? Verse 14 of Acts chapter 1. Mary, the mother of Jesus, was in that upper room. What was she doing? Worshiping, praising God. Guess who got filled with the Holy Ghost? Mary got filled once again with the Holy Ghost and power. Spoke with other tongues and magnified the Lord. And was just the anointed of God. And was a, was a pillar in the house of the Lord up until her death. She was a, a, a known a, as a woman of God, a woman of virtue, a woman that was devoted to Jesus Christ but no matter what. And, and even though the, the, the Bible said that to her, her soul was going to be pierced through when that child was born and he was raised, he was he was given for the raise, rising up of many and the falling down of, of many and that your very soul would be pierced by the birth of this son. She didn't under, full, understand the fullness of that. But as she followed the life of Jesus and went through all that she had to go through, I'm telling you, Mary never once stopped loving Jesus Christ with everything that lies within her. Amen. Unto her death, Mary was unwavering in her love and devotion to God. You want the favor of God upon your life, ladies, moms? Love Jesus with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Embrace him every day. Let him know that he means more to you than anything else in the world. Follow him, obey him, and let his be able to be him. Because the greatest gift you'll ever give to your parents, to, your to your children, and to this world is the favor of God upon your life. Mary, Mary, you held the favor of God upon you. May that be said about each and every one of us and our moms today, that we lived our life so that when people see us, they'll say, she's got the presence of God. She's got the joy of the Lord. She's got what I don't have, and I want to have what she has. And to follow after that, you might be ready to Christ. Mary, the mother of God. God already knows what you're going to do with what I've said. <coughs> so I've just done what God told me to do. But I trust that every mom today 
before you leave here, you would say, Lord, I want your favor upon my life. It begins by giving your life to Jesus, but it doesn't end there. It's just the beginning. Then it leads on to something greater and more wonderful. And only eternity will share it all. See, even Mary's children didn't believe. They didn't believe that Jesus was the Son of God. Read John chapter 12. They mocked Jesus. His own brother James, his own brother Judah, Jude. Uh, he had six, seven brothers and sisters. They all didn't believe. Thought mom was off a rocker. She had to live with that all her life. But oh, after he died, after he rose from the dead, after they seen the miraculous powers and promises of God being fulfilled, you know what happened? Every one of his brothers and sisters come to know him. Because of a mom's unwavering love and devotion, the whole family and God gave us the book of, book of James, the brother of Jesus. God gave us the book of Jude, the brother of Jesus. The entire family come to know him who to know his life eternal. If you don't know him this morning, all you have to do is receive him into your heart. Say, Lord, I need you. I want you. I will love you from this day on. Lord, I pray you take these thoughts, plant them in the hearts of each one that's here, that they might hear what the Spirit of God is saying to them. Lord, whatever you would have them to do, I pray God you would move their hearts right now, that they would say, Lord, I give my life to you. I give my life to you. With every head bowed, every eye closed, would there be any say, pray for me. I won't embarrass you, just pray for me. I really want to follow Jesus Christ. The greatest mother that you could give. I really want that. Yes, yes. The Lord loves I really want that. Love him, follow him, serve him to the day I die. Yes. 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 Uh, Lord, take these that raise our hands. Work in their lives. That work that only you can do. Those, Lord, that are struggling with making that decision. Melt their hearts. Lord, deal with them in such a precious way that they'll come to know you in that personal way. And I'll thank you for it. In Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. Amen. Um, you for the sing for us. I saw people know they probably on their way here. But, uh, I want to thank all the children that came to honor their moms and dads uh, this morning, especially their moms, and uh, all the grandkids that came. And I know that some have left and they're far away um, just to be with their moms. And I hope today's going to be a day of celebration. We're going to go home and celebrate. How many are going to be going home and be around mom at the house? Huh? We're going to have our whole crew in. That's what we're going to have our crew tonight. We're going to have our through there and spend the day together. Because to me, that's what our faith is all about. It's all about our family in being surrounded by this God. I think I jumped the gun on you there. There's a little thing for me. Let's stand as they sing the song.
Oh, oh, oh.